Welcome to the second of five videos from the first lecture for the Roman Army Course 2021 uh, on the sources. And in this second video, I'm going to focus on uh, non-literary evidence, in particular some documents, epigraphy, papyri, and so on. Okay, so I'll get rid of my face. Start the slides. Okay, non-literary evidence. So, uh, one important category of evidence for understanding the military is coins. I don't. I do have coins. Um, it might seem at first glance a less important, but coins tell us all sorts of wonderful things. So the Romans minted coins throughout much of the period, or all of the periods that we're concerned with here, 100 BCE to 450 CE. Um, significantly, these coins often spread propagandistic messages about the emperor. It was a way for the emperor to get not only to provide money for his soldiers, but also to um, uh, provide messages through propaganda. Here, Discipli uh, Disciplina Augustus, and there we see some standards and some soldiers. So, and then on the other side, um, you'd have an image of the emperor much as we have with our coins here. So here are some coins, uh, uh, Canadian coins. There we have a polar bear on the toonie, and of course on the back is the queen, who's on all of our money. Uh, so they can tell us a lot about political messaging, especially vis-a-vis -vis the military is here. Can also tell us about, um, a little bit about what kind of metal was used, tell us a bit about, you know, economic success. Um, sometimes coins are abandoned in significant quantity and hordes which can tell us a lot about um, you know periods of unrest and otherwise uh, coins are also valuable for dating sites on excavation because um, they can give us some idea of the range during which a site was occupied so coins extremely useful now one of the most exciting pieces of evidence and here I just want to introduce it in a later video I'll have to say a bit more about it is papyri we have I don't know hundreds of thousands of papyri mostly from Egypt but also from some other parts of the Middle East as well. So papyrus is a plant that grows on the Nile and they use it to make paper and they use it for thousands of years in Egypt. Um, uh, it has been because of the conditions in Egypt that has survived in vast quantities. It was thrown out um, and this, these papyri uh, include all sorts of things. Trying to find an example here, I don't, but um, some of it is letters between different people and you'll see in our first discussion we have letters and from soldiers to their family and so on some of it is just like receipts for things purchased and the military would purchase sometimes they would steal things sometimes they would pay for things we get lists of those sorts and sometimes that they are roster so there are some papyri not just from egypt where most of it is but some from syria and a place called dura europis we'll get to in a sec in a different video um they have a whole roster of the soldiers in the early third century CE. Here's a bell receipt of just like a billion dollars. Things like this, most might seem ordinary and mundane, um, are can provide us valuable information um, for the military. And they give us a lot of insight to the papyri into the perspective of those from the lower end of society as opposed to like the literary texts, which and the coins propaganda can tell us a lot about um, the emperor. So papyri, extremely valuable. Another important category of evidence is epigraphy, inscriptions. We have again hundreds of thousands of these, uh, many of them from the 1st, 2nd, and 3rd century CE, and then they sort of drop off a bit in the western half of the Roman Empire, although they would in many ways become even more popular in the east, in places like Jordan and Israel from the 3rd into the 6th century CE. So inscriptions, you probably see a lot of inscriptions in your day-to-day. -day. You might see them on a, on a public building, like this year, um, founded in this year by this person. Uh, if you've been to a cemetery, you'll see tombstones, which have inscriptions, the name of the deceased, and maybe a few other little details. So the Romans left lots of these. They left dedicatory inscriptions from buildings. They left tons of tombstones, like this recreated one. Some of them had illustrations, not necessarily of the deceased, but some sort of image that um, they wanted to convey about themselves or their those who paid for the tombstone want to convey about them. But because these tombstones also often include lots of information about careers, someone might give their full military career, it has helped us to understand the career structure of the military, at least for the first three centuries CE. So inscriptions, 
extremely valuable. And there are other kinds too. There are um, we have many different kinds of graffiti and a whole lot more. Another uh, interesting and important kind of uh, inscription is a military diploma. I don't have a passport here, but you know your passport is about yay big, like this Christmas card. Um, we need them to travel to most countries. The Romans had something, uh, had something a little bit like this, the, the diploma, the modern name. So this is, you know, often two bronze um, sheets sort of tied together, uh, copies of an original um, proclamation, which would be housed, say, at the military base and possibly also back in Rome or wherever. And it, uh, this document provided citizenship and, and some other things, rights too. Uh, to serving soldiers. We have lots of these, thousands of these for um, auxiliary soldiers whom we'll meet, okay, one of the big classes of soldiers, and it, it, it tells us if it survives <coughs> in its entirety, it'll tell us uh, when the document was formally made, so to speak, and um, the name of the individual receiving the document, more, more often than not, and it'll tell us the various units, the regiments in which the soldiers served, as well as any other so any other regiments in the area who were who had men who are also receiving citizenship, and it might also include an imperial title. So they're, you know, it's an official document, but very important. We have lots of these. They seem to have been pretty popular. Not that everyone got them, but anyway, to give you an idea of content, here's a translation of one of them. This is Roman military diplomas. A lot of them have been published and edited in a series of volumes, some of them in these volumes called the Roman Military Diplomas. There hasn't been one in a while. Um, this one is from a place called Moesia Superior, which is roughly modern day Serbia, more or less. And in translation, a good chunk of this diploma reads, the Emperor Caesar Domitian, son of the divines Vespasian Augustus, Germanicus, Pontifex Maximus, tribunician power for the 13th time, imperator 22 times, consul for the 16th time, permanent censor, father of the fatherland, all that stuff can let us know that the date for this is 17th, sorry, the 16th of September, 94 CE. And then it gets other, other material. Uh, to the cavalry and infantry who served in the three ally, this is a cavalry unit uh, in the military, and nine cohortes, those are infantry units, which are called the second Pannoniorum, blah, blah, blah. And then it tells us where it is in Moesia Superior under Gaius Aemilius Kikrat. Tricula Pompeius Longinus, the name of the um, commander can help us state it too, before the sixth, and here's more dates, before the 16th day of the calendar's admission by the consuls, etc. So, and often it might tell us rights about privileges, etc. Okay, so that is the last of my inscriptions. These are just some of the documentary evidence I want to highlight, to keep these videos short. I could have also mentioned legal evidence um, amongst many other things. But uh, I will stop there. The next video, next couple of videos, I'm going to look at some specific groups of evidence from a couple of important sites. Uh, peace out.